I went this in there new? with just wanting a nose job and my lips done, and he made me feel like my entire face was messed up. I left in tears because I thought, I am so hideous. Oh, this looks damn interesting. Wait, no, chat. Guys, guys, this actually looks interesting. This, this, this is an interesting topic. I went in there with natural beauty with his cosmic surgery. Just wanting a nose job and my lips done, and he made me feel like my entire face was messed up. I left in tears because I thought, I am so hideous. Right, I guess natural beauty and cosmetic surgery together to spark a dialogue about the difference between iris. Guys, this is like actually interesting. Three point five years in the jungle, pop pockets QCL. My name is Shanna. I do anti-aging research and consulting. My name is Tanisha, aka Vitiligo Queen. Um, I do a lot of advocacy for Vitiligo awareness. Hi, I'm Rena, and I'm an actress. My name is Carly. I'm a healthy lifestyle coach. My name is Sagar Patel, and I'm a yeah. facial plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. My name is Nicola Lowry. I am a physician assistant practicing aesthetic medicine. I've been practicing for 14 years, and I'm a Man, she looks kind of bugged in. for Allergan, the makers of Botox and fillers. Can I please have my natural beauty folks on the left and my cosmetic Ch surgery group on? Ch I, th I think it's gonna watch out when they when they they kind of they kind of they kind of smile, right? And you can see that the lips don't move, or you can see the muscle pull. Like you see it when they when they do when they do go like this, right? But the muscle here, you can see them pull, but the lips go like this. So they're like. <laughs> and like Jesus Christ. On the right. The cosmetic surgery industry exploits people's insecurities. It's better not wipe. Please wipe X Q cow. Exploit? I don't think the industry as a whole does. It's money, right? So I think there are there's motivation behind women Ex not feeling good about themselves. Uh, okay, guys, this is stuff. I uh, guess you, you could use in this context. I feel like you, you, you could use the word exploit in everywhere you can. Uh, hey. I think it's 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 a little bit of a of a disingenuous word if we use the word exploit though. And I do think there are certain companies and individuals who would exploit if that. A, if it's in a solution and they want it, it as to their problem, it just makes sense. That's how not exploiting work. it though. Some places where I've worked, they tell you like, bring out those insecurities because I want them to buy these products. Okay, okay. I mean like. Okay, then 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 hospital hospitals then, okay, they they exploit people's. Uh, uh, health needs like get what? a training they tell you right that. and I'm not gonna do that to someone It's right. like oh well you have this this and this wrong maybe you want to fix it yeah. I'm not gonna do that to somebody and create an insecurity in them that maybe they knew they had and now I'm playing on it or maybe they didn't know but now they do definitely I was only well, we 18 when I called for my consult I guys. said I would like to have a consult for a rhinoplasty and lip injections and he gave me that I needed cheek implants, I needed to have Almost my brow line shaved right. down because changing my nose would change the entire shape of my face. And I felt very much so like he just saw me as money. Okay. There's good doctors and bad doctors. Yeah. And in the end, the important thing to realize is that doctors are trying to do good for other people. There's exceptions, but it's a professional society where our goal is to help other people. And you know, initially going into the cosmetic world, especially, um, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah, and as a doctor, money. you're always taught a couple of laurels from benevolence force to and do and no harm. Force the insecurity is inherent force in all of us. Some of us have more, some of us have less, but it was already there. And you know, does the cosmetic industry capitalize on our insecurities? Sure, I think that there is a piece of that. But as all industries, they're just trying to market to the people that are going to utilize their product. I wish I could change something about my appearance. Guys, the, yeah, the, thing, was, like, guys, um, the thing wasn't bad, just because I, I just couldn't help but uh, uh, it's just man, I'm just I want to change you. something about myself doesn't necessarily mean that I don't accept myself. Those are the thoughts that prompt me to, to work on acceptance of myself. Something that I come across Does a lot. It is the chat that whenever you have a bunch of a bunch of injections and a bunch of a bunch of things, right? Right? 
and whenever you move one muscle, only, only I feel like only that muscle moves. It's like, it's like, like the whole thing is stuck in, in time. And you're just like, I don't know. Dude, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm done. This is not so much that someone wants to change the way that they look, but they want to preserve it. <laughs> There's a lot of issues, especially with women, with the aging process. It's not so much that they want to be somebody else or they want to look like somebody else, but they want to stay looking like them. I fully intend to do I a facelift it. when the time is right. And not because I want to look different, but because I want to continue to look as young as I feel. Yeah, I think for me, um, major decision for me to get cosmetic surgery was that I was in my early 20s uh -huh. and I had had a massive weight loss. I, I naturally lost the weight. Um, I lost 175 pounds and my skin looked like a 90 year old. So for me, I consider it more like reconstructive and um, kind of getting that's back to what fine, I was though. supposed to be. I feel, I feel like that's, a, that's like a different thing though. Guys, even though it's cosmetic though, it also has a, a, a mechanical applications. If, you're, if your skin is going crazy, you lost a lot, you lost a lot of weight, it's different. Before skin, I did uh, by, by you nature. Know, some damage to myself. For me, um, I spent my entire childhood into my early adult life wishing I looked different. I promised myself that I would never ever tell myself, I wish I had this, I wish I looked like this. Because I found that triggered um, things for me that brought back places that I used to be with my eating disorder. I think that's great and I hope you don't take offense to this, but you're gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> and I feel I like if I, was, if I was naturally that like beautiful, it wouldn't be that hard to like be like, oh my God, my face is gorgeous. You know, I'm gonna accept myself. There are people who have facial deformities and, and body deformities. Like I think this has been disingenuous people because people have insecurities about some of the stuff that they have, right? And it's like, oh, you look you look beautiful, but that person probably feels the same way about other people. It's like it's like a vicious circle. You don't really kind get kind of there. what I consider what I went through. It's a little harder. Yeah. Oh, definitely. They, yes, they don't like their, their ears face, and nose, but whatever. I was always don't give the a largest of all of my friends, the largest of my family. Five years of my life, I spent constantly, constantly waking up in the morning and picking apart every single part of my body. I can't continue this guys, constant. Guys, guys, I personally just don't agree with you guys, especially when it comes down to shit like nose and ears. It's like, oh, dude, look at it. I have a face that's like kind of similar to other people, whatever, right? And then I'll have like a, a different, I have my own nose. Why would I want your nose? I don't want your nose. I want my own nose. Who else has my nose? Nobody. So why would I make some guy pay money to make my nose look like somebody else? Bitch ass, what would I pay money for me to look like somebody else? I want to look like myself, bro. I want to look like myself. Terrible habit of bulimia or I'm going to die. Yeah. So okay. it was just. I was horribly bulimic for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Like it was awful. Yeah. So I got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. Cosmetic surgery can empower you. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody's gonna do that. I do wish that every woman could wake up and look in the mirror and be like, I am so beautiful just the way I am. But I also think that if you can do something to give yourself that feeling, then that's no, really great. Everybody. That is a beautiful thing. So one of the questions we actually asked on our questionnaire is what are your motivations for surgery? And someone who says, I can't get a boyfriend, you know, I'm getting bad grades because I have this particular look, they're a bad candidate for surgery. And, you know, that's part of medical school training, that's part of becoming a surgeon is understanding what these triggers are. What are the signs that tell you as a surgeon this is not going to be guys, something that's going to be... Guys, it's about how you feel, though, you guys. If you, have, if you have only, like, your wrinkles, whatever, and you're old, okay, it can empower you, like, if you feel younger and more revitalized, if you have less wrinkles on your, yeah, on your eyes, it can, it is what it is. Yeah, is yeah. it bad grades, we say? And, you know, that's part of medical school training, that's part of particular look. And someone who says, I can't get a boyfriend, you know, I'm getting bad grades because I have this particular look, they're a bad candidate for surgery. Bad grades because and, of know, looks? That's part of medical school training, that's part of becoming a surgeon is understanding what these triggers <gasps> are. What are the signs that tell you as a surgeon this is not going to be someone who's going to be happy afterwards? Whether or not you are inherently truly happy or not, I think that's hugely important. But what if you're a happy person, but you hate your nose? Or what if you're a very happy person and you were born with a cleft palate? and you want to what? be able to project your image to the world that's congruent with how you feel on the inside. And, and maybe you're experiencing negativity because of 
right. the way you were born naturally. Guys, every day. I, I can't help but feel that there's so many facets of things. There's so many things that be to be happy about. I feel like I, I don't. I, I guess it's just from my, my personal. I'm not going to say that. I, I feel like it's going to be rude. Of empowerment I, I just feel like, but for me, a particular one comes essentially from. Guys, well, I'm happy about a billion things. I can't go like. Oh my God, no, I'm not happy because I looked at my nose. I, I don't know. Uh, Someone who was so unempowered by her experiences. This girl, uh, she was 23 at the time, um, was beat by her father when she was younger and sustained significant trauma to her nose. And helping her and fixing her nose and the gratitude she showed and realizing that you didn't help her for that day, you didn't help her for that week, it's for the rest of her life she, she can start moving on. and. That empowerment is one of, is a perfect example of what cosmetic surgery, and that truly was that. It was just a cosmetic you know surgery. That's a, that, that was so she could breathe. That was a fucking A1 take. It like wasn't so she could move around better. It was to make her look a certain way so she doesn't have to remember that experience. There is too much pressure on women to look a certain way. You said that's reconstructive, but if but if, if the damage wasn't that crazy and, and there's no obstructive breathing, or whatever, it, 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 the government will still classify it as a cosmetic. The Therefore, you're not gonna get like fucking. You're saying you gonna pay money and go private for it. That's just how it is, though. Pog champ. We live in a Insta life now. With you know, we have dating apps where you can swipe hundreds of people a day, and you know you can. <laughs> Go online what, and what post. What was the question? There's a pressure for women to look a certain way. There's a pressure for everybody to look certain ways, man. It's whether uh, it's up to you if you're gonna get, get into that or know, not. Hundreds of likes, and you feel like there's so much pressure to look and be a certain way, and like you can never fall. If you just kind of look at the way that things have changed around pregnancy, a lot of women now want to go and have a baby with a beat face, like everything is perfect. It's about the perfect picture. I have to have my makeup and my brows now. I understand some things you just want to be perfect. I get it. I want to I wanna be able to just embrace the moments with my child and not worry about all this makeup I have on right now. I think we've been kind of comparing, you know, say the 25-year-old to the 25-year-old. But then let's think about the women that are middle-aged and Absolutely. are having to keep up with the younger yes. girls to try and still feel attractive and you don't have to keep up with anything though dude it's like it's young you can't keep up it's just imagine if you oh my idea you know, yeah. i gotta keep up with the i did it that's, that's not how it works though dude. that's just how life is dude. relevant and i do see that a lot even with my clientele i have women that are married to very wealthy men yeah and that their greatest fear is that they will end up becoming the second wife because the new and improved wife is on her way in and she's on her way out so this pressure to maintain youth and beauty and relevance is so how about you date faithful men and being strong relationships that aren't fully based on on, on your revitalized young looks so that you can have a stable life that you're not gonna get cheated on when you look like a fucking fossil. So huge, but not what really the realizing fuck? that it's that man that is a is jerk. <laughs> <laughs> right, and it's like it's not. It's not. If you think you're gonna get replaced when you get older because you're gonna look ugly, break up now. The, what the fuck? The, it's, How am I brain dead? It's, it, sure. it's really break the up now. That you're with, and so dodge the bullet. I think that always happen to keep. You are blessed. You are lucky. To know for a fact that the person will will, will, will chief you look uglier later on. You, did you know now? Leave now while you still can. But with the Joneses, and I always wanted to just like I have to look this Some way. Some people don't this know that they're going to like this, and me. they'll never and know until it happens. Love me. I might have to. I have to make myself be who he loves. To take it. It's to a him. lot of pressure. Oh, I get it. I get it. I am beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go first because I woke up this morning and I really loved myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> With me having vitiligo, it took a long time. When I first was diagnosed at five, no one knew what it was. Everyone thought Michael Jackson made it up. Like, it's a real thing. No one knew that it was real. Okay. So a lot of people- I don't care about the rest of this. People's first time encountering what it actually looked like in person was me. It took a long time for me to get to this point to where I'm just like, Oh, I love. Today I'm teaching.